Greeting saints, welcome once more. Can we bow our heads and pray for the word? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you honor and praise. Lord, I worship and adore you and magnify your holy name, O God. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Father, I pray that, Lord, you help me to minister the word of God in accordance to your will. I also pray for everyone that will be listening to your word, that they may hear your mind, they may hear your will, they may hear as well the purpose of the word of God today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, I want us to read in the book of Luke 17, chapter, um, Luke chapter 17, from verse 11 up until 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was there no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? I will end at 18. Except this foreigner. So to me, these are the people that were used to the place. And sometimes you find yourself being comfortable uh, by being called a Christian. You become too much comfortable and you don't understand why your life is the way it is. And sometimes we don't appreciate the Lord the way we should, and we think everything is just automated. And we realize that these 10 leopards, they cried for help at some point. They cried to God and God responded. And because they couldn't see him anymore in that instance, they got what they wanted, only one. So it's 10% out of the 100% that went back to Christ and said, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me. So today, I want us to challenge one another today to say that how many times do we testify of the goodness of the Lord upon our lives? And sometimes we focus on the season that we are in and we fail to understand that there's a whole lot of 90% of the things that the Lord has done or is doing upon our lives. The 10% makes us to grieve so much that we overlook everything that the Lord is doing and we fail to appreciate life. We fail to appreciate provision. We fail to, um, to appreciate health. We fail to appreciate that car that you're driving. You fail to appreciate that house. You fail to appreciate the food that you can eat on a daily basis. It doesn't matter whether you're working, you're not working. You are fail to appreciate the children that the Lord has given unto you. And sometimes we complain about the challenges that we face. But there are people that are mourning, they are crying. They are looking for that which you have. But on your side, you are wanting, you want that which you don't have. And you fail to appreciate the Lord with the little things that you have done or many things. Like I say, it looks like little, but if it's taken away, you realize the value that it had in your life. Until such time, you don't have health. You realize that waking up every morning it's not because you've got a medical aid it's not because you can finance the doctors but waking up every morning and you realize that your life is intact you realize that you are still breathing you realize that you are you can still wake up and bath nothing happened through the night and as you are sleeping you're vulnerable to a whole lot of things that could have happened in your life but nothing happened in your life you wake up you go to work you come back you think it's your doing because you are very smart you know how to plan your day. You exercise, you eat antibiotics or you eat vitamin C, D and whatever. You think that because you are eating healthy food, that's why you are intact, you are healthy. Until such time, you have eaten healthy food. Until such time, you exercised. Until such time, you did everything that needs to be done. You realize that your health can be a stake. 
then you will learn to wake up every morning and say, Lord, I thank you for life. Lord, I thank you for health. Lord, I thank you for my children. Until such time you had a loss in your life, you realize that there's a need for you to thank the Lord for the children that you have until such time. Until such time. You don't have a job. You wake up every day and say, Lord, thank you. I'm miserable in my job, but I thank you, Lord, that I can still put bread on the table. I thank you. Until such time. Until such time. You miss your marriage or you lose your marriage. You'll wake up one day and say, Lord, I thank you. I appreciate you. My family is intact. I appreciate you. It's not because I study a lot of material. It's not because I know what to do. It's not about I take care of my family. But it's beyond that. It takes grace. That is one of the reasons why we have to testify. And I will list a few things that I've gathered today. It could be more, anything that you can think of. But there are many reasons why we need to testify of the goodness of the Lord in our, in our lives. Every day of your life, when I'm sitting like this, I can, spill, I can still talk. It's my testimony. I thank the Lord that I can still talk. And I once, when I was ministered, I think it's last year or two years back, I don't remember. But I remember very well that it took me three years. When I was born, I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk. Only after three years, I could speak, I could talk, I could talk, I could walk. There was nothing wrong with me. There was no diagnosis from the doctors what is happening, but I just couldn't talk. Only thing I could do is to sing. I could praise God. That is the funny thing. The only words that will come out of my mouth is for me to say mama and also to, to praise the Lord. And I remember I used to have a nickname. I was called Halalela that day, that time. My grandmother used to call me Halalela because it's the only song that I could, I could sing. I will sing, oh yeah, la le la, oh yeah. So I was worshiping God, but I couldn't talk. But today I praise the Lord and I understand that maybe that was the attack from the enemy. So there's just a whole lot of things that we need to appreciate the Lord for. We need to appreciate the Lord for a whole lot of things. So I, also, I already spoke about Thanksgiving. And now I want us to speak about uh, we overcome by the testimony. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 12, 11, Whosoever therefore shall confess, you know, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the power of the testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. They overcome by the power of the testimony. I want to give you a small uh, example, a small little example that you can uh, maybe think of. Um, when you were, you, you are in a relationship, maybe with your children, with your spouse, with your siblings, with your parents, any kind of a relationship, relationship that doesn't have appreciation can easily suffocate. So if every time you give your sister um, money or any valuable thing, you can give them anything and they just look at you. They take what you're giving them and they don't appreciate you. They don't say thank you. And me and you, as human beings, what can we do? They don't appreciate. The, it, it looks like nothing that you do is right in their eyes. Whatever, no matter how hard you try, they don't seem to see it or they don't seem to appreciate it. Will you continue doing it? <clears throat> it will be very difficult. It will take you grace for you to continue doing it. At some point, you can get tired because you don't get appreciated for the small little things that you're doing. So, the same way with God. 
God wants us to relate with him in that fashion, in that manner, to a point that he attached a testimony with overcoming, with power. A testimony has got power on it. When I just spoke about the testimony now and I said, I was not talking. When I was three years, I didn't know how to talk. I couldn't talk. <clears throat> so immediately when I acknowledge that I could only be able to talk because of the power of God, it's a power on its own. It's a testimony. I'm acknowledging the originator of the doing or the originator of the circumstance that led to the change in that circumstance. So immediately when you are just speaking those words, you are provoking power that was, was there when the situation changed. So it's like a provoking um, a substance or something that provokes power. It enables the power or the manifestation of the power of God in your life. In many things that maybe you didn't pray for, but it has got power on it. When I was still growing up, I remember when people used to testify then, um, they will say in Venda, um, which means when you have got Jesus in you, you have got a testimony. So we, we used to testify then. You will go in the front and say the goodness of the Lord, everything that the Lord has done for you. And when you do that, you know that this excitement, another person is motivated by your testimony. Maybe I'm still waiting for the Lord to do something in your life. But when you testify, you provoke the, the very same power that has enabled that situation to change in your life overcome by the power of their testimony and the third thing that I want us to um, to highlight the reason for a testimony is a confession to men in the book of Matthew 10 32 it says whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven For me, if you if you know um, if you have ever done a CV, you will know that every CV has got a reference. So every CV is required to have a reference. So when you testify, you are putting a reference because you have confessed, you have stated there that Jesus has healed me. And one day, when you are looking for something, there's a reference in the heavens. So the heavens knows it has been written, it has been confessed in the heavens. They can testify on your behalf as well. They can confess back on your behalf. So you can imagine how many references do you have in heaven. The moment you testify, instead of putting a whole lot of baggage on Facebook, gossip, and everything, why don't you just put some testimony for a change? Tell the world what the Lord has done for you. You get so much excited, oh, I got a job, but you fail. You, you fail to acknowledge that God has given you that job. You may not have prayed for it, but somebody has prayed for it. But the grace of the Lord has given you that job. The least you can do is to appreciate him. The least you can do is to say, Jesus, I thank you. The least you can do is to say, Lord, I appreciate you. The least you can do is to say, Jehovah, I acknowledge that this cannot be my doing. I acknowledge that this can only be God. I acknowledge that I've been through trials and tribulation. I acknowledge that wherever I am now, it can only be God. Can somebody 
together with myself, change our mindset and say, I may be through going through autumn. And as I was sweeping this morning, I realized that leaves are starting to fall off at their brownish. Before long, these trees will, won't have leaves anymore. They will look dead. They will look dry. And those are the seasons of our lives that happens. You know why you need to testify? You testify that, Lord, I may not have leaves on me right now like a tree, but I know that my roots are rooted in you. I know that I'm still alive. I know that summer is coming. I know that spring is coming. And when spring comes, when water starts to drizzle on the roots, I know that my leaves are going to be renewed I know that new leaves are going to come forth but I thank you Lord that I'm rooted I'm grounded in you I may not have leaves that are visible but I thank you Lord that I've got roots that can never die unless they're uprooted because I'm rooted in you I cannot be uprooted I will wait for my season I will wait for my autumn I will wait for my summer Next door, it can be summer, it can be autumn, it can be, it can be spring, sorry. It can be spring, but my spring, my summer is coming. I may be facing autumn, I may be facing winter. It doesn't matter. What matters is I've got roots that are grounded on the ground. And I want us to say today, Jesus is our hope. He's our salvation. You have got something, something to thank him for. You are still breathing. You are still alive. You may not have leaves. You may not have fruits. But you are alive. You exist. It's just a different season in your life. And I'm here to say today, can we be in a habit of testifying, thanking God for his goodness, appreciating the Lord for all who he is. If you don't know what to say, you say, Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you because you are God. On your own, you exist. You don't need anything for you to exist, but yourself, you are self-existent. Even if I don't praise you, you can raise the stone to praise you. That's how powerful you are. It's because every living creature can praise you. Even if men decide we won't testify, we won't praise this God, this God is cruel. But you can raise the stone to praise you. We don't praise you. We don't testify because you are desperate. No. And looking back, we realize that if I can take this picture, there's a whole lot of people that are not Christians, but they thank the Lord each and every second of their lives. You'll find that something good happens. They will say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. But they are not saved. Us who are saved, are we not like the 90% who never came back? We prayed. We know this gospel. We know the truth. We know that at some point in our lives, we went into the private space, the closet, and we started to wail in prayer. We call the saints. We say, saints, pray for me. The little that we can do is to thank you. Let's pray. Father, 